Check, check. Check, check.
morning good morning it's good to see everybody here i hope everybody's had a great week this past week i'm gonna ask if you would please stand and join us as we sing standing on the promises standing on the promises of christ my king through eternal ages let his praises ring glory in the highest i will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God. Amen. You may be seated. Do want to welcome you to worship. Glad you made it out today. If you're a first-time guest, we have some welcome cards in the chair in front of you. You don't mind fill that out and drop it in the offering box in the back. We'd love to know more about you. Do want to announce that uh, Thrive is coming up this month. That's a youth gathering, and it's going to be here. April 27th, and Brother Josh is leading that. It's going to be a good thing. Today, the deacons will meet at 5 o'clock if you're a deacon, 5 o'clock meeting. Also, we have the ministry fair next week. We're going to have all the different ministries set up in the Family Life Center from 9.30 to 10.30. And the best part is this. The best part, there's going to be snacks back there. Snacks. So that means bring some snacks, sausage balls, and stuff like that. And... Uh, We'll partake of those. Wednesday night, the 17th, is our Rise Against Hunger. We're going to pack some uh, things for those to feed. I think 10,000 meals. That's coming up too. And the ladies in the library, I want to thank you all for last week and bringing all those beautiful flowers. That was really nice. Amen. But I got to hear the first service. So I know you're going to be blessed by this wonderful praise band and a wonderful solo by Jones. And it's going to be a wonderful day to worship. Let me pray for us. Father God, we're thankful for each one here, thankful for you being here. We come now praying you would wash us clean of every sin. And Father, open our minds to your word. And Father, fill this praise band with your word and fill them with the, the spirit they need to lead us in worship. Let us worship you in truth and in spirit. And let us, Father, fully give ourselves to you. I do pray you bless anybody with a need today. You know their needs, know their hearts. Help them where they need to the help. We do want to praise you for Sister Tori, who was saved in a car accident this week. She was, could have been hurt very badly, uh, but she wasn't. Praise the Lord. So we thank you for that miracle and how you're still blessing Brother Ed and Joy Adams. As Ed's getting over his illness too and getting better day by day. We pray you bless each one that has a hurt each one that needs a touching hand, we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now do me a favor, stand up and greet about six people and tell them Jesus loves you, okay?
it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. That's what we're about to sing about. I tell you what, I told the first service this, uh, you know, sometimes when you're scheduling people to be up here and people are volunteering their time to be here and all that kind of stuff, stuff comes up. And sometimes it's last minute and this, ha this week it happened to be the drummer. So we didn't have one of our typical drummers filling in this week. And uh, Wednesday night we was practicing. We were like, man, what are we going to do? So Jones went back there. He's playing and guitar. He goes, puts it up. And he goes, gets a tambourine. I'm like, well, that sounds pretty good. We'll just play an acoustic thing here. We'll just bring everything down, and we'll just have a, you know, we'll just sing to the Lord and play it this way. Well, then he shows up this morning. He's like, what if I just went over here and played the drums? I was like, do it. So he went over here, and he just sits down, and he just plop, 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 plop starts playing the drums. I'm like, man, that sounds great. So all this stuff just kind of got thrown together this morning. and uh, But we are so blessed and so thankful for everybody up here on the stage and everybody in the sound booth and the abilities that God's given them and the willingness for them to be able to use the talents that God gave them. So we appreciate them. Y'all join us as we sing this song, House of the Lord.
Jones just a second to get down here. He's gonna. This is a song he wrote, and I'm gonna let him talk a little bit more about it. He sung it a few months ago, but it's the lyrics of it is just something that I feel like everybody can relate to. So, Jones, I'm still I'm still waiting on my uh, callback from Stephen Crowder. I put in a drum demo a while back. No. <laughs> he hasn't called me yet. <laughs> now uh, this this song we did a couple months ago, and it's interesting. It popped up in my um, my Facebook memories a while back, and it was like three years ago that I wrote it. It kind of blew my mind uh, just how fast time flies. Um, I was out running after church one day, <coughs> uh, just out at Wheeler, and I, I don't, you know, when I when I run, I usually, you know, put on some music and just pray um, while I'm out and about, and I was praying, it was different this time, because as I was, as I was running, I just kind of had words kind of coming to me, and it, and the, the song really became a prayer. This is a real different structure than what I usually write, because I have a lot of people <laughs> come up to me and say, yeah, I was a musician, this is this is a lot different than the stuff I usually write. A lot of the stuff I do is a lot harder rock and, and so forth. And so this is just a complete departure from all that. And it's just a real honest prayer between um, me and God. Uh, this song is called I'm Just a Man. Just a man like Abraham, and I'm crying out for mercy once again. I'm just a man here on the earth, and I'm asking for forgiveness. And for you to still find one, you've got to. I'm terrified as I come before my maker and try to reason out to I. God, you are so big, please understand. I'm just a man. Just a man like Abraham, and I'm crying out for mercy once again. I'm just a man here on the earth, and I'm asking for forgiveness, and for you to still. To come upon my maker and try to reason I to I God, you are so big, please understand that we are guilty and deserving to be damned. Before you cleanse the earth with your mighty hand, please remember I'm just a man. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I just thank you so much for your amazing grace, for your love, and your mercy. And God, just so many other things that sometimes you just don't have the words to express how much we love you and we 
and how much you mean to us and how thankful for you are, we are for everything that you do for us and your constant protection and your constant guidance and the things that you do for us every single day. And God, just to see how you work in everybody's lives and how everybody's got so many different things going on and, and your constant protection. And, and when we don't seem to have hope and we realize we're just a man, that you're always there and all our joy can always be based on you. And we just thank you so much for this day and thank you so much for this opportunity to come and praise your name. I pray that you be with Brother Kip this morning as he comes and he brings your message today. And I pray that you just give him the words and, and the, the ability and the wisdom and everything that he needs to, re, to recall everything that he's studied and prepared for this week. And I pray that you would just use him as your instrument to be able to get the message that you want and have uh, ready for each one of us here today. And I just uh, pray that you just help us to have an open heart and open ears and open mind to be receptive of your word. And I just thank you so much for Jesus dying on the cross. Please forgive my sins. Just now pray now. Amen. Wasn't that great? Great music. You got your Bibles turned to 2 Corinthians 4. We'll be looking at 1 through 12 today. 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 12. Pray for Pastor Ronnie. He's doing a one-day revival at uh, First Baptist. What city, Judy? Leighton. First Baptist Leighton. So pray for Pastor Ronnie. Glad Sister Judy made it, amen. She can find the church and Ronnie's not here, so amen. Praise the Lord. We love you. Uh, if you got your Bibles again, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 1 through 12. And let me pray and we'll get started. Father God, we're thankful for your word again. Thankful that you're here with us. Pray now you empower your word. Let it come out as you want it to do. Have your holy and perfect way with it. I pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, the question today for the sermon is, what kind of person does God fully use? And in the word fully is so important there, right? What kind of person does God fully use? Hopefully that's us, amen? Hopefully that's us. We can consider the options. You can be concerned about the work of God, or you can put it on the back burner, right? You can be engaged in God's work as much as you want to be, or really as little as you want to be. I told the Sunday school class I was teaching today that I got saved at 13, but I didn't get committed to God till I was 27, 28. What happened to all those intervening years? I just wasn't that committed. I'd go when I wanted to and do what I wanted to, and I was saved. I just wasn't committed. I wasn't eager to grow. I was uh, running through sports as a teenager and chasing after girls when I got older. Finally caught one over here, amen. amen? Took a while. I was 30 when I caught her. She was young, you see. You got to catch them young, guys, if you're still single. But anyway, uh, then I went to the Marine Corps and was chasing that and chasing a business career. And I just wasn't focused on God like I should have been, amen? And that can happen to all of us. There's one story I want to share with you about Stephen Cole shared this. A man used to run a very tiny general store out in the country. And he had one employee named Jake. One employee named Jake. And Jake was there every time this customer came in. And Jake was there not doing much. He was kind of lazy. And one day the guy came to the store and Jake wasn't there. He asked the owner of the store, what happened to Jake? He said, well, Jake retired. Then he said, well... Who's going to take the vacancy for Jake's job? He said, Jake didn't leave no vacancy. He wasn't doing nothing. <laughs> Amen? He didn't leave no vacancy. So the question Stephen Cole asked is, what kind of vacancy would there be in church if you or I wasn't here? What kind of vacancy would there be in the kingdom of God if, if we wasn't here? I'm watching the NCAA tournament and uh, watching Alabama get to the Final Four for the first time, Roll Tide. All right. He's for Auburn, but Brother Ronnie, I'm for Alabama. They did good, right? They had some key players, and, and probably a lot of those key players who are playing this year's tournament, what's going to happen to them? They're going to go somewhere else next year and be gone, and they're going to be missed, right? 
they're going to be missed. We should be missed too as we are serving God and we go to heaven. We should be missed. We need to serve God and, and commit to excellence, making God our top priority. You know, God should be first and then your spouse, and then your family, and then everything else, okay? God, your spouse, your family, everything else. That's the order it should be in. And focus on that, amen? Well, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I love this chapter. It's powerful. It's got so many good things in it. So if you got your Bible again, 2 Corinthians 4, the first point is this. The person that God uses has a strong heart for him. Look at this first verse. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we receive mercy, we do not lose heart. What keeps us from losing heart? What keeps us going, going, going? Amen. We need to understand that. Paul, the great apostle, had some things here that William Barclay pointed out. He said he was aware of his task. Who made Paul aware of what he had to do? God did, right? God made Paul aware of what he had to do. Who makes us aware of what we should be doing? God does. Through his word and through the Holy Spirit, right? You ever been riding down the road and God told you to call somebody? He does that to me all the time. You ever been walking down somewhere and God says stop and encourage that person? Again, he does that all the time if we're listening. God wants us to make an impact on people. And God gives us strength to do it, right? God gives us strength to do it. It is said that the work handles... Handel's Messiah, the musical uh, genius, wrote this thing in 22 days. It is said, I was reading, that he didn't sleep much in 22 days. He, he wrote that great musical piece. Reminded me of writing my doctorate dissertation for a seminary. I had waited too late. I would waited. The thing was due in a few weeks, and it was now time to write it, and I'd done all the research. I'd gathered the stuff together, but I hadn't written it. You know why? I didn't want to. But my best friend, Dr. Bill Evans, told me, get it done, Kip, get it done. He kept calling me, get it done. So Gina can tell you she lived through it. For about one week, I just took off of my regular job. I had a secular job and did the church thing, but I, I kept on writing this paper for hour upon hour upon hour, not sleeping much. I got crazy, as they say, as an outhouse rat. Right? You ever got hallucinating and seeing stuff? I was nuts. But I was writing that paper. And I'd wake Gina up. She can tell you. Two, three, four in the morning. Hey, proofread this for me. And she would get up. She knows English. I don't know English too well. She would proofread it and tell me where I'd messed it up. So I'd correct it. And I got it done. God gave me the focus. Why did I say all that? Because God gives you and me the focus we need to get things done. He gives us the focus we need. We can push through way more than we think we can. We can overcome obstacles one by one by one. Right? It's track season right now. And you ever seen those guys who, who jump the hurdles? Number one, I don't know how they do that. My vertical leap is this much. So I would not, I'd run through them. I wouldn't run over them. I definitely wouldn't jump over them. But how they do that, they... They go over one hurdle, then the next hurdle, then the next hurdle. Kind of Christian faith is like that, isn't it? We go over one hurdle, then the next hurdle, then the next hurdle, and God's the one that's helping us every step of the way. He wants us to do great things for him, to share the good word, to help others, and he guides us every step of the way. Number two, God said, had given Paul this ministry. As we have this ministry, what ministry did Paul have? Paul was called to be what? The apostle to the Gentiles, wasn't he? Amen. Did Paul do that pretty well? Yes, he did. And he did it pretty well. He had the ministry. It came from God. All of us have ministry to do for God. And, and whatever it is, do it well, my friend. Do it well. Whatever it is. If it's serving, serve, the Bible says in Corinthians, right? If it's preaching, preach. Teaching, teach. Whatever it is. Do your things well for God and let God help you get through. Pages are sticking together here. 
And number three, Paul remembered the mercy he had received. Again, verse 1. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy. How was mercy given to you and me? It was poured out to us from Calvary's cross. Mercy was poured out. What is mercy? Mercy is something we don't deserve. We can't earn it. It's given to us. It's mercy. It means we don't get what we deserve. We deserve to go to hell and be punished. But because of the grace of God and the sacrifice of Jesus, we get that mercy, right? Aren't you glad it's mercy rather than judgment? Amen? It's mercy. Mercy poured out on everyone who received it. When Jesus suffered and died for us, we should always praise God for it and not lose heart. That's what it says in the last part of verse 1. Do not lose heart. Have you ever been disheartened? Have you ever lost heart? And the answer is yes. I'll answer for you. You can lose heart. Sometimes, hopefully not much, we give in to evil. Sometimes we just get tired of doing the same thing, don't we? Sometimes you told this person about Christ so much and they don't seem to receive it. We say, hey, I'm just not going to mess with that person no more. We lose heart. But who does God give up on? Nobody. We shouldn't give up on anybody. The Bible tells us when we get tired, we should do this. Galatians 6, 9 and 10. Galatians 6, 9 and 10. Let us not grow weary while doing good. Why is that in there? Let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not, what? Lose heart. Because, my friends, we will grow weary sometimes in doing good. We will grow weary. But don't quit. Press on, my friends, press on. Therefore, if we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who have the household of faith. We've got to keep doing God's work till he calls us home. You'll know when you're done, he'll call you to heaven. And by the way, in heaven, you're going to work too. Just going to be different. So God uses those that have a strong heart. Number two, God uses the person that seeks to please him seeks to please him you know when they're playing again back to the basketball tournament the coaches have all these plays and i'm interested to learn some about that i'm not a basketball star you might can tell why because i'm short and fat okay that's the main reason but i like to watch and nate oaks has all these strategies he learns and he uh talks about how he's learning these plays and that play and he teaches those to his players and the players seek to carry them out. You know why? Because they're seeking to please the coach. You and I live to please God, church. We live to please God. And you do that by overcoming sin. It says in verse 2, we've renounced the hidden things of shame. That's sin. Not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully. We reject sin in every way. And here's what we do do. But by the manifestation of of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. We commend ourselves to every man by what? The Word. By the Word. By the Word of God, we commend ourselves. And God is looking at us. We are in His sights. Amen. We're in His sight. He's looking. Aren't you glad He's looking? He's helping us. He's with us. He actually indwells us. The Holy Spirit does. God is with us. There's power in the Word of God. I was studying for this sermon and read this quote about C.S. Spurgeon. Charles Haddon Spurgeon was a great preacher, led thousands to the Lord, thousands. Wonderful preacher back in the day, still quoted a lot. He was going to a new church to do a revival, and back then they didn't have sound systems like we got. So he had to just use his voice. And he'd never been there, so he wanted to test out his voice in this new sanctuary. So he went up to the pulpit and he loudly proclaimed he's by himself in there. He said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He thought he was by himself. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Again, he thought he was by himself. But unknown to him, there were two men working way up in the balcony. Two men getting ready for the service that night. 
And when he shared that verse, one of the men was so moved by that one verse, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, that he got saved. Wow. There's power in the Word of God. There's power in the Word of God. It's not so much about us being powerful. You know, Josh is very powerful. That dude's strong. If you don't believe me, go up and tap him on the shoulders. That dude is strong. I'm glad he's on my side, amen? Grant, too, for that matter. Amen? Glad they're on our side. But it's not so much about us being strong or big. It's about God, right? God can do mighty things through us. Number three is this. God uses the person fully that lets Jesus shine. Let's Jesus shine. You know why these lights are working up here? Because somebody back there turned them on, right? They're letting them shine. If they cut them off, it'll get darker. We have to let the gospel shine through you and me. Verse 3. But even if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those who are perishing, whose mind the God of this age has blinded, that's Satan, who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God, should shine on them. That's your negative side. Those, some folks just reject God, right? They know the truth, yet they reject it over and over and over. But the Christian, we do this. This is 5 and 6, 2 Corinthians 4. We do not preach ourselves. Isn't that good? But Christ Jesus the Lord in ourselves, your bond servants for Jesus' sake, for it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We are to let God shine, amen. We let God consume us and the light to overwhelm us and just shine out. It is said that when Moses went up to meet with God, he would come down from the mountaintop and they would see Moses' face. And what was his face doing? It was shining. Because he'd been with God. We should shine because we've been with God. We should let God shine through us because we live in a dark world. The world's going the wrong direction, church. The world's running that way fast. But we have the light. We have the truth. We have the power. We should let it shine. Let it shine through us by God's power. Preach Jesus. Sing about Jesus. Share Jesus. Live for Jesus. Be fired up about Jesus. Be totally in, right? I used to play a lot of sports when I was little, younger, whatever you want to say. Loved it. Loved it. Now, I wanted to give my best effort. You know, if I played sports with somebody and they wasn't giving their best effort, it kind of ticked me off. If we're going to play, let's play to win, y'all. If I'm going to live for God, let me live the best I can and go all in, right? Let me go all in. Don't just dip your foot in a pool of water. Man, dive in. Go for it, amen. Jim Elliott said this, the great missionary. He died, by the way, on the mission field. He said, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Let me say it again. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. The Bible tells us in the New Testament, that victory, that death is swallowed up in victory. You know, when you die, that's your greatest victory as a Christian. You get the great promotion, you get to go be with Jesus, and you go to heaven. Victory is ours. We should live like we are victorious and go for God. Many years ago, Gina and I were called to be a chaplain. I was in the Marine Corps, then I went to the Army, and we were called to be a chaplain on active duty. That meant we had to leave Tuscaloosa, Alabama, God's country. I mean, that is right in the center of God's country. They had the Tower of Bear Bryant there on the practice field. And I've scampered up that thing several times and been there looking over the field when nobody was there. Now it's in a museum somewhere. But we were in Tuscaloosa, and we were called to be a chaplain, and her a chaplain's wife, amen. And so we left. We left what we knew of Tuscaloosa. She left her mama, her best friend. Left her. Could still call her, but not in the same community. She left her daddy, who she loves. Left her sister. Lost, left some nieces. I left my mom and dad. Why? Because God had called us to a different place. 
When God calls us, we need to move and go and know that God opens great doors of ministry when you go. If you don't go, you won't never get there, right, amen? If you want to go to Birmingham today and never leave, you ain't going to get there. We have to go where God leads us. That's why we're at Center Star. We were at Center Star. We were going to go down and visit Faith. Never went there. I never went to Faith once. Came here, and I know Pastor Ronnie for 30 years. We went to seminary together and heard him preach and got around your congregation and the worship. And I said, Gina, we need to go there. And she said, yes, sir. And we came on over. But she didn't really say yes, sir. But <laughs> I'm trying to get her to say yes, sir, more often, but it ain't working out real well. But we came here because God sent us. God wants us to be the person that seeks to please him and let Jesus shine. Number four, God wants us to be sold out like Isaiah. What did he say when he got touched by God? He said, here I am, send me. Send me, I'll be the one to go. But we needed a praise leader not long ago. Maybe long ago. How long have you been a praise leader, man? A year? Two years? Fifteen years? He's a great one. Aren't we glad to have Josh? Amen. But when we needed a praise leader, he stepped up. Here I am. We need to step up for God and be sold out, fully committed, trusted and obeying, working by his power, even though we are weak in the flesh. That's what the next verse says. Verse 4, chapter 4, verse 7. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. That means a clay pot, right? That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. The power that, that Josh leads the praise band from is not just in Josh. Why it's so good, and I'm going to brag on him because I love it. Praise the Lord is so good because it flows from God through him. Amen? And all the praise members, and all the folks working. And didn't Jones sing good this morning? Amen. But God wants us to be sold out. It reminds us that we're a vessel. We we said this about a vessel. The important thing about a vessel is that it be clean, empty, and available for service. We are vessels so God might use us. We are earthen vessels that we might depend on God's power and not of our own. Are you trying to do ministry on your power? Are you trying to serve God on your power? It won't work. It will never work. It ain't going to happen. You're going to get tired. You might get angry. and You're going to get wore out. But when you let God be the power source, amen, he ain't never going to run out. And you can keep bouncing back and bouncing back like the Energizer Bunny. Remember the Energizer Bunny, you old folks? He used to walk around and clap his hands. Remember him? Or clash cymbals, whatever he had. We have to have God's power flowing through us. It, it makes our potential greater than we can understand on our own. And by the way, you don't have to understand it. And by the way, if you understand everything God's doing in your life, you're not deep enough yet. You're not deep enough yet. You need to let go and let God just keep working through you, working through you, working through you. The fifth and final point this morning is this. God uses the person that knows God is on their side. What do you do, preacher, when things get hard? What do you do when you get exhausted? What do you do when you get tired? What do you do when things go wrong? What do you do when you get attacked? What do you do? Paul knew all about those things, right? He was beaten by rods, shipwrecked. They stoned him outside one city. By the way, them Jews knew how to stone somebody. It's this preacher's belief that he was dead. And God raised him back to life out there because he wasn't done with him yet, right? So no matter how far down you get, anybody been stoned here yet? No, I ain't been stoned yet. Had some folks might have wanted to stone me, but hey, hadn't happened yet. But no matter how far you got down, God can bring you back up. And that's why Paul wrote this. This is good. You ought to underline this and put this in your a favorite place to remember it. Verse 8 and 9. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed. Confused, you might say, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. You see, God is always with us. 
And no matter what you're going through, let him get the glory. Let him pull you through, amen, and keep marching on toward heaven because heaven's ahead of us. It's a better place. I want to leave you with this. It's got these little wooden crosses from the Holy Land. And it gives you a point to pray about and to focus on. Sometimes if you are just stressed out, man, grab that little wooden cross and pray and focus. And I brought a little acrostic for it, using the word cross to help you focus in on it. The C is for this, is Calvary's cross. Man, if you're having a hard day, think about all Jesus did for you. His love poured out on the cross. It rained down from the cross. He loved and provides for us. Number two, the R is for this. It's a rallying point of faith. Reminds me to pray. To pray. We can do a lot of things with our power, but prayer is much more powerful. I like somebody who said this. I can't remember who it was, but said prayer is a major work. There's a church over in Korea. It's the biggest church in the world, or there it was. I mean, thousands upon thousands of people go to it. And their first service started at 8 and it went through the day on Sunday. But some people would get there at 2 and 3 in the morning, Josh. 2 and 3 in the morning. And they ask him, why are you coming at 2 and 3 in the morning when church doesn't start till 8? He said, we've got to pray for the service. I wonder how much more powerful our church would be if we prayed more for the service. If we prayed more for the ministry. If we prayed more for the preacher, the worship leader, the praise band. All the teachers in Sunday school. We should pray more. Prayer is powerful. The O is for this. It opens our hearts to God. You know who knows your full potential? Only God. Only God. God knows your full potential. The first S is for this on cross. It's a stress reliever. Who needs stress relievers? Amen. I do sometimes. God's peace is available and abundant. It's available and abundant, amen? So we should pray and let God give us the, the stress reliever we need. He gives us peace, and the peace of God passes what? Understanding. It's powerful, y'all. We should pray when we're under stress. And the last S is this, success is guaranteed for God. Success is guaranteed. He's got the way forward. I like what J. Hudson Taylor said. All God's giants have been weak men. Go back to that quote, Joe. I'm reading off of that. Thank you. Have been weak men who did great things for God because they reckoned they depended on him being with them. We do great things because God is with us, working through us, amen, and we're obedient to him. And Job, when he was down to his bottom, Lost his family, lost his possessions, lost everything pretty much except for one mean old wife. He kept a wife. And she said, curse God and die. But Job, in the depth of his tragedy, said what? I know my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer lives. Friends, God has the best for us. We need to be fully used by God and, and let God lead us each and every day. Whatever that means in your life. So would you bow your head and Close your eyes. We'll go ahead and have a time of invitation. If you want to give God a burden or a prayer request, uh, come and give God that burden or prayer request today. Don't go home with it. Our God can help you carry that burden. He can ease that pain and help you today. Come and, and give God that burden today. Come and give God whatever's on your heart. If you want somebody to be saved that you're praying for, come and, and pray about that today. If you just want to say, God, here I am, use me more fully, you can come and pray about that. We'll have a moment of silence, and then you can come now if you'd like to. Father God, we're thankful for you, thankful we can be used by you fully. Do pray you bless each one in this church family who's here in person or listening online, use us, Father, for your glory. Open our eyes to know more about you. Open our hearts to care more about you. And, Father, use our feet to take us places where we can help others grow in faith. We love you and praise you for this wonderful church family. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen and amen. Thank you all for coming today. I'm going to let you out a little early compared to Pastor Ronnie. you got 10 minutes, so you can thank me for that. Amen. But pray for Pastor Ronnie. He's probably coming back pretty soon, but pray for him. Deacons, 5 o'clock meeting for you deacons, and we'll do that. Any announcements to make before we go? Josh, come up here. You want to pray us out, brother? I'll let Josh pray us out. All right, let us pray. Dear Lord, I just thank you so much for this day that you've given us another great day in the house of the Lord. And we just praise your holy name. We thank you for the message we just heard. And I pray that you just help it to apply it to our lives. And I pray that you just keep us safe as we go home and wherever it may be through the rest of this week, wherever you may lead us, dear Lord. And I pray that you just help us to be a lighthouse in this community and wherever our feet go. And I pray that others will be able to see you through us. And I just thank you so much for Jesus dying on the cross. Please forgive my sins. In Jesus' name, pray, amen.